What's the deal, banana peel? I mean, what is probability? Well, we all have the intuitive notion that probability is the measure of the likelihood that an event will occur. And we can express it in percentage or simply kind of rate it from 0 to 1. For instance, the probability of me getting a boyfriend is zero and the probability that you like to admire that large poo you just took is one. <laughs> Cannot believe I just said this. But when did probability start to be taken seriously? I mean, the concept of probability has been around for thousands of years, but it did not arise as a branch of mathematics until the mid-17th century. In fact, in the 1600s, a nobleman called Chevalier de Meret used to gamble frequently to make more moolah. When playing with dice, he used to bet that at least one six would appear during a total of four rolls because, from his experience, he was successful way more often than the times he lost. Yet, one day, he decided to change the game. He bet that he'd get a double six on 24 rolls of two dice. Chevalier ended up realizing this wasn't as profitable. So he texted his mathematician friend, Blaise Pascal, who told him that the chance of success of his new strategy was just 49.1% instead of the 51.8% that used to be. Soon enough, a new branch of mathematics called probability theory had risen. Well, I must admit, it is not my favorite thing ever. But it can be pretty mind-blowing. For example, imagine that you are listening to music in your iPhone slash iPod slash Walkman slash gramophone and you have 1000 songs in it. Now, as you're lazy as F, and you just want to relax after a long, tiring day, you decide to hit the shuffle or random button, which means that the songs you will listen to will be played in some random order. My question is, what is the minimum number of songs you must listen to so that the probability of two of them being the same is greater than 50%? Come on, give it a thought! What do you think the answer is? 500? 300? If you thought something like this you are completely wrong. The answer is in fact 38 songs. What I'm trying to say is that if in 1000 songs you listen to 38 of them in the random mode, the probability that two of them are the same is greater than 50%. Oh, okay, so now you don't, you don't believe me? Well, let's do the math. Challenge accepted, bro. In order to make calculations easier, let's determine the opposite, that is, the probability of the songs being all different. To pick the first song, you have 1000 choices out of 1000 songs. The second song can be anything but the one you've just listened to, so there are 999 out of 1000 possibilities left. For the third song, there are 998 possibilities and so on. After the 38th song, the number of ways is equal to 981, thus the probability we initially wanted to determine is equal to 100% minus this thingy, therefore it is something like 50.9%. Touché! Wingardium, what the hell happened here? Finally, there's a very interesting theorem or rule that lots of mathematicians 
tried to prove for more than 25 centuries. It is called the 50-50-90 rule that states that if the chances of you getting something right are 50-50, then there is a 90% probability you will get it wrong. Now it is time for me to peace out. Farewell dear humans and may the odds be ever in your favor.